the pen of inspiration says, you may believe and promise all things, but your promises and your faith are of no account until you put your will on the right side. Which is right side? On the right side of God. If you will fight the fight of faith with your willpower, there is no doubt that you will conquer. Your part is to put your will on the side of Christ. When you yield your will to his, he immediately takes possession of you and works in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Quoting Philippians here. Your feelings, your impressions, your emotions are not to be trusted, for they are not reliable. So when you are tempted, what does that tell you? You, you feel like uh, and you desire to go back to the old way of life or uh, going back to the, um, you know, use something that you shouldn't be using and watch something you shouldn't be watching. And you have urge and temptation. But when you put your will right at that moment to the side of Christ, what do you do? You say no to the temptation right then and there. No, I made a commitment to follow Christ and his way of life. I'm not going to go back to that route, route again. You reject it right there and the devil will flee from you. This is something you need to exercise and flex your spiritual muscle right then and there. If you don't do that, you're going to succumb to that old way of life, the habit. Accepting Christ is one thing, but we need to grow from there. That process, in that process, a lot of things do happen. Pain, suffering, severe temptation, fierce battle against the devil, your family is falling apart, and the, all kinds of things can happen in that process. In order to survive in that process, you need to make sure that your will is on the part of Christ. Now, <clears throat> that takes exercise. That truly, truly takes exercise. If you put your will saying, okay, I'm not going to go back to that old habit of mind, although I'm tempted, you choose Christ. And you say no. Sometimes even audibly to yourself. The shout against the devil. You fight a good fight. So fight, fight begins when you choose Christ because the devil is not going to leave you alone. You know, he lost his prey to the other camp and he is reluctant to let it go. And he will come back to you again and again and again as long as he sees that you are being tempted. But what happens as you flex your muscle first time and say no to the devil, to the old habit? You have won the victory at the moment. And your faith is strengthened as you said no. So when, when next time the same temptation come around, saying no to the temptation will be just a bit, little bit easier, just a tiny bit unnoticeably easier. And as you say no again and again and again, your faith is being built up and no, that same old habit of yours is no longer temptation to you. Your faith is being strengthened. Sometimes this battle is fierce. I recall Martin Luther who studied the Reformation in 16th century. When he studied out the Reformation movement, the battle was fierce. So he was writing 95 theses. With a pa on the paper, he had a pen and paper, and he was writing using the old 
ink bottle. And he thought he saw the devil across the room. And, and the Luther picked up his ink bottle and threw at the devil. The ink, ink was splashed all over the wall. I'm saying it because sometimes the battle gets fierce like that. Because the devil is not going to leave you alone. Your part is put your will on the side of Christ. God is the one who gives you the desire to follow God's way. And when he does, he will also supply the way to escape temptations and trials. He knows our limit. He provides the power to obey. So in, uh, under our study guide, number two, I will, uh, first, number 13 basically says, I will depend on God. You alone cannot defeat the devil because the devil is stronger than you are. You need to depend on God. So simple translation of a verse, 13, chapter 2, verse 13 is, I will depend on God. That's the simple translation. The third marks of star Christians is found here in verse 14. Verse 14 says, do everything without what? Grumbling and arguing. Translation, I will not complain. Do everything without grumbling and arguing. Star quality Christians make that commitment. Every time you complain about your circumstances, what you are saying is, if I were God, I would do things differently. We believe God led us thus far. And we trust him that he will lead us safely to the harbor until we arrive there. In the process, we keep on trusting him without complaining and murmuring. Complaining is one of the most dominant sin among Christians. Someone has said that. Let me say that, say that again. Complaining is one of the most dominant sin among Christians. Is complaining sin? Well, I'm not sure if that's the most dominant one, but I do agree it is a sin. Because um, uh, when we complain, we tend to focus on problems. And we will fill our minds until we see nothing else, when we focus on negatives. But when we focus on the Lord and His goodness, we see our problem disappear in the light of eternity. And I think a life of Joseph, for example. Do you think Joseph ever complained in his life? You know, he, his life was full of trials, temptations, and difficulties. But in my Bible, I don't see him ever making any complaining. Because Joseph always, um, always tried to be a part of the solution of the problems rather than part of the problem itself. And God rewarded him richly because he always to try to be the solution to the problems. Complaining is a symptom of failure to trust God. And to be submissive to his provision in your life. So number three, 
star quality Christians make this commitment, and that is, I will not blank complain. Go down to verse 15 and 16. Philippians verse, chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. So that you may be blameless and pure children of, children of God who are faultless in, in a crooked and perverted generation among whom you shine like stars in the world. Hold firmly the message of life. Here comes the um, words that you shine like a stars in the world. This is the heart of our text today. And Paul uses three key words to describe how we should be, how we should live. Blameless, pure, and faultless. That's a high, that's high bar. And Paul is raising the uh, bar for Christian standard here. Who can say I'm blameless and I'm pure and I'm faultless? I only know of one person who could ever say that, and that's Jesus, who is our example. Nevertheless, that is our goal. Blameless, pure, and faultless. Being pure means what you see is what you get. You are not hiding anything. You are not wearing masks. Your conduct on Sabbath morning is the same as your conduct at home. No hiding anything. So we will make an impact on the world by living that are visibly, observably, measurably, noticeably, and obviously different from the, from the rest of the world. That's the high calling for us. And we are to be different to make a difference. So that's the translation of verse 13 and 14. I will be different to make what? Make a difference. I will be different to make a difference. The fifth star quality comes in verse 16 through 18. It says, Then I can boast in the day of Christ that I didn't run in vain or labor for nothing, but even if I am poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. In the same way, you also should rejoice and share your joy with me. In the book of Philippians, it's hard to come to any um, conclusion of any studies in the book without coming to the words joy and rejoicing here. So here is the final commitment that true Christians should make and that is to live for others this is number five under our study guide I will live for others and be happy and be happy here is a challenge for every Christian going through pain and suffering and hardships and difficulties of life and still stay happy, rejoicing in the Lord all the time, always. And Paul envisions a day when he will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, when all things are said and done, they, they, the day will come when he will stand before Christ. And so will you and I. And according to this passage here, 
Paul plans to boast about what the Philippians had done for their own generation. What he was able to do to lead them to Christ. So, what will you boast about when you see Christ face to face? The time will come. The only thing that will matter on that day is the impact you had on other people around you. And for the cause of Christ, everything else will fade away. The only thing that will be remembered is any difference, small difference, big difference you had made for God's kingdom. Paul mentions being poured out as a drink offering here. What is a drink offering? Well, that, that phraseology comes from the Old Testament when, um, when the, uh, they made the offering. They also had a drink offering started in Genesis somewhere. And um, uh, this is a metaphor this is a metaphor for the blood of Jesus being spilled on the cross. So in, in the Old Testament, they had a practice of pouring wine over the fire, the sacrifice being burnt right there. And hot fire will the, uh, consume the uh, wine right there, creating the sweet aroma. That's what it means here. Old Testament of a practice of pouring wine on the top of the um, animal sacrifice. So Paul is saying here, even if I end up losing my life for you, it won't matter to me as long as you live for Christ. That's the kind of commitment, commitment Paul had for the benefit of others. What a high calling that is. So fifth commitment the Christians urge to make is this. I will live for others and be happy. In, in spite of many negative things around the world and around me, I make a commitment to be happy. Now that's um, that takes a lot of practice. You need to sp flex your spiritual muscle in order to arrive there. I don't claim I got there yet, I'm, but I know where I'm heading to. But I, I know what my goal is because Jesus, the Bible is at the goal for me. I'm not there yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to reach there. I'm trying to reach there every day, working out my own salvation with fear and trembling. And there's a lot about being fearing and trembling because if you don't, uh, if you're not fearful of um, not doing exercise, what happens? If you don't exercise, you become weak. You are in danger. You will, be, you will be in danger of succumbing to the temptation of the devil. So, this is, because this is so important, working out, spiritual exercise is so important, we, you need to be fearful and trembling about the possibility that you, are, you may not be doing that. Because if you don't do that, you will be in danger immediately. So when Christians make these five star quality commitments, you know you are, you are on the right track. Amen. First of all, you do your part. Your part is spiritual exercise. And sometimes 
You need to flex your spiritual muscle. When the needs arise, it is time to exercise. Sometimes these come without warning. Different circumstances, accidents, bad news, occasions, different occasions, calls for you to flex your spiritual mus muscle at the moment of notice. Number two is, I will depend on God. Although God is the one who gives you the desire to do what is right, it is your part to exercise your willpower, to exercise your willpower. And third one is, I will not complain. Can you make that commitment today? And keep up with that commitment for the rest of your life? I will not complain. Only, in Christ's Only with Christ's strength. Amen. And then fourth commitment is, I will be different to make a difference. Can you make a commitment to that today? What about the last one? I will live for others and be happy. If you get this down and remember this every day, um, let me assure you, you are on the right track and Jesus loves you more than ever before. And you will grow and grow and grow deeper in relationship with Jesus. And your connection becomes so strong with heaven. You become so strong and you, your connection with heaven it becomes so strong and strengthened. Your faith is elevated when, str when trouble comes. When temptation comes, you would be able to pick up the ink bottle and throw that to the, to the wall like Martin Luther did. Because you don't have to think about it anymore. You know which side you are choosing immediately, without hesitation, without any hesitance. You can choose the side of Christ. How? By putting your will to the side of Christ. That is only possible because of God who wants to dwell within your heart. Accept him today and accept his will and follow his way of life and your, your life will be shining like a stars in the world. May God help us that we may be able to serve as stars in the world. God bless us. Amen.